Today, we have a ball that is failing at life. It just rolls into a wall and stops. Let's see if we can fix that. The first thing we want to do is open up the context wizard. We then are going to create a context, and we're going to name the context player context. This context will have two properties. The first one will be the jump height, how high the ball will jump. The next property is going to be um, a reference to the ball's rigid body. And that's uh, what's causing the ball to spin forward. So we need to access that. So I'm going to create the context. Okay, the next thing we need to do is create an action. We're going to make the jump action. This will execute when we want the ball to jump over the wall. So we're going to create it and then open it. Remove this generated code here. And then add a simple um, force to the rigid body in the upwards direction to cause the ball to jump when this action is executed. Next, we're going to create a condition. Um, this is going to find out when the ball is in front of one of those wall segments. So we're going to open that up. Um, we want this to return true if it's in front of a wall segment. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a ray cast. Uh, we're going to cast it in front of the ball, and if the ray cast hits something, it's going to return true that it is blocked. Um, so we need to grab the direction that we want the ray cast to be shot in, and then we're going to just return the boolean that the ray cast returns. We're just going to have it look in front of the ball by like, um, maybe two or just one. We'll just do one. Next, we're going to open up the editor and uh, just quickly design this simple behavior to cause the ball to jump when it's in front of a wall. We're going to name it movement and uh, add two states to it. Um, we're going to have an idle state and a uh, jump state. And then we're going to create a transition to the jump state. Uh, so that way, every time the uh, ball is blocked, it's going to go to the jump state. If it's not, it's going to go to the idle state and do nothing. Add the jump action um, and save the behavior, and we're pretty much good to go. All that's left is to uh, click on the ball and add the state machine to it. Of course, we need to add the behavior we just made to the state machine so it knows what to execute. And last but not least, make sure that connection to the rigid body is fulfilled. So do that, and now let's test it out. Oh, first we got to set the jump height. That's right. Set the jump height to 50 and close the context. And here we go. Let's try it out. And it jumps and just barely makes it over. And it goes and goes and jumps and just barely makes it over. Let's make it jump a little higher just so it doesn't hit that. We're just going to change to 75. Close the context and here we go. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Gets to the wall, jumps, and makes it way over. That's plenty, plenty of height there. So it's just going to roll down this track. Let's... um. Just speed it up here. It's going down our amazing obstacle course. One problem here is that this ball will just keep rolling forward forever and right off the end of the level. What if we could stop it? What if we could just add a target here at the end where we wanted the ball to stop? Let's do that real quick. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the state machine, open it up. We're going to add two properties to the state machine. We're going to add a transform property called target transform. We're then going to add a unity event property. If you haven't used unity of events before, they're kind of like actions. Uh, they're really handy because unity has um, extended uh, serialization um, to these. So they'll show up in the editor and you can kind of um, use a fancy editor on them. So that's why I'm using them here. At any rate, I'm going to add uh, the references to the context here. You'll notice that the context has no idea what the target is or what on target reach means. We're going to have to add that here in a second. Last but not least, I'm going to 
add a listener here. I want this method called when the target is reached. I want this method on the state machine called when the target's reached. So I'm going to generate that method. And when the target is reached, I want to stop the machine that is named movement. Perfect. Now I'm going to go to the context and real quickly add those two properties that um, we added there as well. So I'm going to add the transform, the target, and then I'm going to add the unity event. Um, it doesn't know what it is because we're not don't have that namespace yet, but we're going to name the event on target reach just like we did on the state machine. Perfect. All right, now I need to add the usings, and there we go. Usings, perfect. All right, so we're going to add another action. We want this to be the stop action. I want this action to execute to stop all movement. So we'll open that action, and we're going to then stop the rigid body's velocity as well as its angular velocity. So we're going to stop it moving forward as well as spinning. And then I'm going to transport it to the target position just to make it a nice clean um, movement there, just in case it's a little bit away. And lastly, I want to trigger that event. So I'm going to invoke it. Um, that way everyone knows that the target's been reached. Perfect. Next, I'm going to create a condition. Uh, I'm going to name this condition has reached target. So this will return true when we are at the target. I'm going to add this code right in the editor because it's pretty simple. Basically, it's going to return true if the rigid body position is less than 0.51 um, units away from the target position. The 0.51 number comes from the difference between the target size and the ball size. So add the reference to the target here. And then, of course, I want the forward mover. I want this just to shut off when we reach the target. That way it's going to stop moving forward. Perfect. Now I need to name that machine movement. So that is the one that gets shut off when that on target reach method gets called. And next, we need to just edit the behavior to add in the newly uh, defined actions here. So all that I need to do is I need to add one state. I'm going to name this the stop state. And I'm going to make a transition. Um, that way, if it has reached a target, it is going to trigger the stop state. If not, it is going to go to idle. I'm then going to adjust the priorities of these transitions to achieve the desired effect. I'm going to update this. Behavior updated, perfect. Let's test it out. All right, here we go. It's rolling, rolling. Jumps just like I did before, perfect. It's clearing just like we wanted it to. Let's speed it up. Going down our daunting gauntlet here. Um, as it gets to the end, here we go, here we go. Moment of truth. So it arrives at the target and stops. Perfect. 